proclamation. So. Um, the arts definitely teaches students things like creativity, constructive criticism, and risk taking. Um, and then with those risks, then there's a lot of failures, but then success. And I'd say with Logan and Nick, both of them have mastered all of these skills. And we are beyond proud of them um, placing out of 11,500 students in the state in the top 25. So this is a huge honor for our students. And even, you know, we had five that got into the top 300. Um, and Logan's unfortunately sick today, but his mother is here. So, <laughs> so I'll turn it over to Deanna to talk about Nick. Um, so next project was one in which the students did, um, they took photographs, used Photoshop, and put a project together. And then we would visit that project and be able to rework that project, simplify it, and he did hand cut paper, layered it, put LED lights in the back. Um, and I know that you've got a picture, don't you? <laughs> So um, this was based on a magic realism project, and so he uh, completed the project, reworked many, many layers, um, and it was submitted to the show, and it, it's a jury show, and it was selected. So it went from regional level to the state level, and then made the top 25. And as a result of that, uh, Nick is going, he had several scholarship offers from different art schools. Um, he is accepted at the Cleveland Institute of Art, received a scholarship once they knew he made the top 25. He got his extra, was it $10,000? For college, which was awesome. And, you know, that's one of our goals um, for our students, you know, to um, push them, guide them. But um, we have many students that are earning these scholarships from the upper level art classes like CAT, Portfolio Advanced Studios. So, so congratulations, Nick. was a small oil painting done on wood panel, and he chose koi fish um, because I guess koi represent uniqueness, and so this piece is all about being unique and showing who you are um, and just being able to be different from the crowd. So, thank you, Logan. Tell him thank you for us. Yeah. <laughs> Accommodation honoring the Ohio Governor's Art Exhibition Award of Excellent Recipients. Whereas the Ohio Governor's Youth Art Exhibition, now in its 48th year, is dedicated to the educational and artistic advancement of our talented young people in the state of Ohio. And whereas this exhibition is open to all of Ohio's 1,112 high school, both public, private, and chartered by the state of Ohio and Department of Education. And whereas the purpose of the exhibition is to provide all budding young artists of the state with opportunities to advance their talent, whether that be through scholarship or experiencing the process of entering your work in competition. And whereas the following recipients from Mount Vernon High School had artwork selected as the top 25 in the 2018 Ohio Governor's Youth Art Exhibition, Nick Rice and Logan Wade. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education of Mount Vernon, Ohio acknowledges these students for the honor they have achieved and expresses its appreciation for the recognition they have brought to Mount Vernon High School and wishes them success in all life's future endeavors. Presented this 21st day of May, 2018. Congratulations to Nick and Logan.
had a close working relationship, generally those who are in the building, uh, to come up and recognize those individuals. We do have an order kind of an, uh, of events as we go through here, so I will go ahead and pull those up. And what we'd like to do is, uh, when we mention the name, we'll mention who's coming up. If we could have the retiree kind of come up and stand to the right or left, uh, those who will be presenting and sharing information, um, then I'd love to have the retirees just tell us what they're going to do in retirement. It doesn't have to be a lot, maybe just a little bit. It's the honeydew list or it's I'm going to travel. Uh, and then we have a special presentation we would like to uh, present to you on behalf of the Board of Education. Um, again, following all of those, we will go ahead and have a reception afterwards. So if we could go ahead and start up, and uh, Brendan Beal will be our first recipient. Brendan, can you come on up with, with Sue? Hi, I'm Sue Miller, my principal at Twin Oak, and this is Brenda Beal, who has been my savior for the last five years. Um, Brenda, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her, because she has been there a very long time. It's all been great, right? Um, Brenda graduated from my, Mount Vernon High School, received a high school stenography degree from the Career Center. She worked at the Treasurer's Office from 1984 until 1990 in accounts receivable, took a little break, came back in 1991 and worked as Columbia's secretary until 2013. At that point, she had been called on to not just be a secretary, but she also was kind of a part-time principal at times because we had a principal that had to be in two buildings, so he couldn't always be there, so Brenda was his right-hand person. Um, actually, by 2013, though, she was ready for a change, and she thought, why not go to that new building up on, down in the hollow? And, and she knew it was going to be a challenge, but she was ready for it. So she got here and she helped us in 2013. Um, she's helped me through lots and lots of um, difficult times and fun times. And we've had a great time doing it. Um, she's worked hard to learn everything that makes a secretary great. She has um, not only been the acting principal, but she's been the school nurse. She's been the... Um, the guidance counselor, she's been the social worker, she's been the person who we all go to um, when we need to have somebody to just give us some great advice. Um, Brenda has a wonderful heart. She's a kind-hearted person. She has, and I sometimes people don't realize that about her, she does things for children that, and for staff members that people don't even understand half of what she does, I know. But I know that She's always been, at times, she's been there. Um, if a student, you know, she would work with Beth Small, who I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, if somebody needed a lunch, Brenda was actually there, and she was paying for the school lunch for those children. Didn't ever want anyone between Beth and Brenda. We always made sure the children were well fed at the school and were never embarrassed because they couldn't afford to have a school lunch. Um, one of the things about Brenda, I loved my first secretary when I was here, but Brenda knows everyone in this whole town. She knows everything about you. Every single thing you can think of, Brenda, if I need to know anything besides cameras, I would ask Brenda, because they know everything. And because of that, she has great contacts, and she's always watching out for people. She makes our place a better school because she cares about the children, and she cares about all of us. Um, she wanted me to tell you she's been married 42 years. She has three wonderful girls. She has seven grandchildren. And when she retires, I know you're going to tell them this, but you told me this this morning, and this is my punchline. When she retires, she's going to take a map. She's going to say a globe and a map, and she's going to point her finger, and she's going to say, I want to go there. And so she loves to travel. I hope that happens. We're looking forward to all kinds of postcards. So I want to say thank you to Brenda and for all everything you've done for us. Yeah. <laughs> 
Reverend Joe Barron's fire. I know we have a couple of folks that might be sharing about that. I will work there until I retire, and I will make you proud. And I think I have. 
It was my goal to make Mount Vernon City Schools proud, and I think I have. Uh, what will I do? What will I do? Um, I will continue to teach part-time next year. I will continue to wake up God at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday, St. Vincent de Paul Church. Um, yeah, I do that. Um, I will continue to work for the Ohio Classical Conference and the promotion of Latin in the study uh, and the pursuit of Latin in Ohio. Um, continue to travel and most importantly, uh, nag up and uh, <laughs> nag up and, and be soft, which is in Hebrew for grandma, as I expect my third until the end of summer.
I can honestly say of the hundreds of people I have worked with over the years, Mrs. Miglin is the most prolific combination of hard work and knowledge I've ever had the privilege to call a colleague in my career. In terms of the day-to-day -day operation of a school, scheduling, cube folders, covering absences, etc., Sherry is unmatched. She is literally a logistical genius. A handful of educators may know the wall better and understand budgeting more in depth. Going back to the shoe thing. You're not allowed to do the budget. That's the only one, that's the one thing you're not allowed to do. Um, but in terms of the day-to-day -day stuff, Mrs. Miglin is far and away the best I've ever seen. Throughout her tenure at Mount Vernon Middle School as the assistant principal, she was an active participant or flat out in charge of RTI, fast forward, second step, Chromebooks, Truancy, E-Rate, the building autism team, closing the gap at the building level, etc. These jobs were completed in addition to the normal assistant principal duties that most APs have to tackle like discipline, evaluations, duty schedules, etc. If I'm honest, I have no idea how she accomplished everything. Or her ability to multitask, plan, organize, and lead allowed the building to run effectively and allowed me to focus on teacher development and the overall big picture. The following are comments I made on Mrs. Miglin's evaluations throughout the years. The first evaluation I ever wrote about her said Mrs. Miglin is extremely knowledgeable regarding special education and scheduling. She is professional, hardworking, and honest. I do not view her as the assistant principal, but as the co-principal of Mount Vernon Middle School. And Mount Vernon Middle School is a better place because she chose to accept the challenge of her new position. Aren't you so glad you did that? In 2014 15, in her evaluation, I wrote Mrs. Miglin is the glue that holds Mount Vernon Middle School together. She is by far the most knowledgeable person in the building regarding special education, testing, scheduling, and a myriad of other areas. In her 15 16 evaluation, I wrote Mrs. Miglin is masterful breaking the mold of, quote, this is how we have always done it, end quote. She is never satisfied with the status quo. Mrs. Miglin does a tremendous job offering support to teachers regarding effective instructional practices. She has been a unified arts teacher, a special education teacher, and guidance counselor. These experiences have allowed her to glean countless strategies to engage and meet the needs of all students. I finished that evaluation by writing, I could not have asked for a more knowledgeable, hardworking, and professional assistant principal. As I write this, I'm struck by how much I still need to learn from Mrs. Midland. I could read a synopsis of every evaluation I've ever written of her, but they would all sound exactly the same. Every minute of every day of every year, her work ethic never wavered, and she continued to impress me with how much she knew about students in the field of education. Professionally, Mrs. Miglin became my sounding board for all major decisions regarding Mount Vernon Middle School. I could hear the opinion of 50 educators, but I wasn't moving forward with major changes until I spoke to Sherry. In addition to the qualities I've already stated, she is level-headed and someone who is able to anticipate the response of all parties before a change is even implemented. She could predict what was going to happen from A to B to C all the way to Z while I was still thinking about B. If you can't tell, I'm very impressed by Mrs. Miglin, the professional educator. Yet I'm even more impressed with her as a person. Sherry is caring, loyal, generous, and kind. Sherry and Dave have raised four great kids while Mrs. Miglin simultaneously worked through an unmatched career. How she worked so hard at being a mom and being an educator, I will never know. Raising four college graduates while working long hours cannot be easy. Just think, Mrs. Miglin, six years ago, about this time, our collaboration began as I spent the ride to Cedar Point convincing you to move from guidance to the assistant principal's job. You would probably like to punch me in the face for that right now. <laughs> on our way to ride roller coasters, you decided to go on a crazy ride of being an administrator, and you have done a fantastic job. The last thing I want to say is this. I've heard Sherry tell many stories about her mom and how she worked long hours and brought work home so she could get more done. She once told me her work ethic came from her mother. All I can say is Rosalie should be very proud of her youngest daughter. I will very much miss working with you. Congratulations and God bless you. Um, since I don't know what I'm going to do after this, I wanted to, um, seven years ago when Gary came to us, he started a new kind of tradition at our school, and it's, we give a shirt out to our staff for, um, 
<laughs> we give a shirt out to our staff when our staff does something unique or outside of the box or just to show our appreciation for them. So that seven years ago when he started that, I was the first one to get the 100% shirt, so I thought it was unique that to end our raid together that I'm going to present Gary with a 100% shirt as well. Gifted education. 
general, quite frankly, but she was she's a, a true advocate for gifted students. And I think it was her advocacy that has led us toward adding additional um, gifted intervention specialists. Um, her knowledge in this area and her this willingness to go outside the box uh, is truly been massive. Seven years, 
and with my kids, and then the grandkids, and fairs, and more fairs. Uh, you'll find me at the sheep barn, and the hog barn, and if you go over to Croton, you'll find me in the chicken barn with my granddaughter. Um, and then after they all go back to school, I think that we're going to go on a trip, a train trip out west.
that over the years that, that education uh, can drain you, but I know too that it can empower you. And I know that I wish her the best. I'm jealous that she gets to go out west. Um, so I wish her the best on her journey. And I just want to thank you for your service to Mount Vernon High School and to the students and the staff. Thank you.
things major in biology or chemistry, and I also have plans to uh, get a degree in biomedical engineering somewhere down the road, too. And he is also going to swim for a Division Three powerhouse <laughs> program, <laughs> which you get to be a part of. Yes. All right. I'm going to read this proclamation so we do have something uh, to share with Aiden. So this is a resolution of commendation honoring Knox County's Franklin B. Walter uh, All Scholastic Award recipient. Whereas the Ohio Educational Service Center Association, in conjunction with the Ohio County Superintendents, is committed to recognizing outstanding seniors from across the state. And whereas students qualify as one of the best and brightest of the class of 2018 based on their academic achievements, personal accomplishments, and community service. And whereas participating in and receiving this award distinguishes students and recognizes their outstanding achievements. And whereas the recipient from Mount Vernon High School is as follows, Aiden Clarkson. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education of Mount Vernon, Ohio acknowledges this student for the honor he has achieved and expresses its appreciation for the recognition he has brought to Mount Vernon High School, Mount Vernon City Schools, and his parents, and wishes him success in all life's future endeavors presented this 21st day of May, 2018. Congratulations, Aiden. Uh, 
something that identifies a specific individual. Um, sometimes they can be you know, not so kind things, but quite frankly, a lot of them are really nice things. But when you mention someone's name specifically, you know, the, the way that we started this, we didn't really want to get into that part of it. And so um, there have been a lot of very nice comments about a specific individual or group. And likewise, every once in a while, you're going to get a, a comment that someone's just not happy about a particular person or situation, and they share that thought as well. So um, that's all part of the program. It's moderated. But to have uh, well over 600 thoughts right now, as we begin to dig down into that, uh, I look forward to sharing that with you as it concludes on Thursday. All right. All right. We have a number of items for board approval in the superintendent section there. Uh, board policies that are listed there. Um, I have number two.
fact that that really hasn't been addressed and how that needs to progress moving forward. And I think that we, it was important for us to have a sense of protocol related to it. Our hope and desire would be that we would never have to walk down that trail. But in the event that we would, at least there's there's some guidance there that perhaps we've never had before. Would that be accurate? Yes, I think it would. The new policy does is provide revisions to tighten up what is currently in place. We, we have experienced ourselves some students who have not passed classes. Mm -hmm. What this is saying is if you see a trend of that or that's happening or going to the district and say, you know what, you're not ready to go and take an encumbrance right because it's at our cost, you know, that they, they would do that. So it allows the district to have an interjection to say, you need to be performing, performing well before you can continue taking college credit courses. That helps. I, that think, helps. Uh, I think some of the other more minute kinds of things related to college credit plus will continue to evolve. I think the Board of Regents and ODE, I mean, they continue to kind of reshape this. And we have quite a few students who are currently participating. Do you have a, a rough number? I don't have a rough number, I guess. Um, I, I mean, I think we're well at least like 100 students with the MBNU. If you consider Kenyan students, that, that's good 50, 75 there. Um, Columbus State, is, this is our first time with that. We usually have done Kent State a couple of students, but Columbus Community College was our first, this year was our first year working with them, and we had one student who took classes there. So it, it, the opportunity for any of our students to go take classes anywhere with online classes, that goes in a whole other mix as well. Years down yet, 
as to where you're going to go after you do these credits. Tell me more about the student, or why? Why should we? Um, you know, I, I think most of our junior high kids or middle school kids need that socialization and that age-appropriate interactions, rather than going to COTC or someplace where they're going to be sitting next to a four-year-old. It could happen.
go back. Yes, this is feasible. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Gatsman. Yes. Dr. Bell. Yes. Then I get a recommendation to go through by the VA. So. Thank you. 